This is an introduction to embalming math. You're encouraged to follow along using scrap paper and pause as needed to complete the equations yourself. Embalming math is actually quite simple, but it can look complicated and kind of make you cross-eyed from time to time. All you really need is the information that you see here on the screen. How much did, of an arterial chemical did you put in? What's the index of that chemical? How much supplemental chemicals did you put in? And how much fluid is in the entire tank for the machine before you started your embalming? Unfortunately, what we're given is actually looks a lot more complicated. It has a lot of words in there that we actually don't need, and we're asked a lot of questions that can be confusing or not so straightforward looking at our equations. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit and put it in terms that are easier to understand. As much as some of this information may be great for your case analysis, it's really not important or part of the math equation. Let's look at what's important to keep by first starting with terminology or what some of these words mean. The total volume is made up of everything in the tank before we start embalming. Wherever that level of fluid is, is your total volume. Now your total volume typically includes water, all of the supplementals you've added, and all of the arterial chemicals you've added. It's important to know for the equation how much fluid is in a bottle. So when the word problem says full bottle, we're referring to a 16 ounce bottle. If it says a half a bottle, that would be 8 ounces, or a quarter of a bottle therefore would be 4 ounces. A arterial chemical is any chemical that has preservation qualities, and a supplemental chemical is any chemical that acts as a vehicle and also has properties that assist with such things as retaining moisture, removing moisture, correcting water pH, anticoagulant properties, or really anything for that matter that doesn't have preservation and disinfection properties that a arterial chemical would. The key item that differentiates the two is that arterial chemicals have an index, and supplemental chemicals don't. Now you ask, what is an index? An index is a percentage of formalin in that bottle. Now it's important when working with the formula to understand what we're actually looking for. So with the basic formula, the foundation that allows us to get a lot of these other answers is how much formalin is in the bottle by how much fluid is in that bottle. And then we're translating that by combining everything that we have going into that tank by how much formalin is in the entire tank that you're embalming with versus how much fluid is in that entire tank. The left side of the equal sign in our equation equals the bottles. All of the arterial chemicals, their quantity and their percentage of formalin. And the right side of that equation is everything in the tank. The percentage of formalin in the tank by the amount of fluid in that tank. Let's revisit our uh, problem that we looked at earlier and now apply the equation that we've learned. So the word problem that we looked at and the numbers that we had looked at on the left side of the earlier page were the same. The left side was the items that you needed extracted from that word problem. So now let's use those numbers and apply it to our formula. So I stands for index. So the index of our first chemical is 21.5. And we're going to multiply that by the 
concentrated ounces or the amount of fluid in the bottle. So that was one full bottle. That was a 16 ounce bottle. So we're going to multiply that 21.5 by 16. Next, we will add our second arterial chemical. So in this case, we're going to multiply our 18 index chemical by the amount of fluid that was in that entire bottle. How much fluid did we add? And in this case, we added two whole bottles, which is 32 ounces or two 16 ounce bottles combined entered that tank. Treating the two chemicals separate in the equation, we now add them together. We do not add our supplemental chemicals to this side of the equation because they do not contain formalin. The second side of the equation is the amount of fluid and the percentage of that fluid that contains formalin in the tank. So we're going to write this out with P holding the place for the percentage because that's what we're solving for in the part of the equation that we don't have yet. And we're going to multiply that by the total volume of fluid in the tank just before we start embalming. All measurements we use should be in ounces. There are some exceptions in other equations that we will cover at later lectures, but for the, this equation, all numbers need to be in ounces in order for the math to work out. Let's start by working out our equation. So 21.5 multiplied by 16 is 344. Now pause this video for a few seconds so that you can work out what 18 times 32 is. So hopefully you got 576 as an answer. For the next step, you're going to want to add together 344 and 576 to combine the two chemicals. Hopefully you got 920 as an answer. Now, how are we going to figure out what P equals at this point? You're going to want to divide 256 from both sides of the equation in order to remove it from the right side and to figure out on the left side what P equals. Pause this video again so that you can work out what 920 divided by 256 equals. Based on this math, P equals 3.59. That means that 3.59% of the entire tank is from formalin. Something to be careful with is unlike other areas of math, where a percentage is seen as a decimal point and the decimal point moves to spaces, we leave the index or the percentage of formalin in the bottle as a whole number. So 18% formalin in the bottle is just written as 18, not 0.18. Therefore, the answer you get for P was also a whole number. So 3.59 does not mean 359%, and nor would 0.75 be 75%. The number stays whole. There are many questions that can be asked. One of the most common questions to ask for more information is how much water was added. Now, the reason for this is you could fill your tank and with supplementals and arterials and you don't know how much water was added to that equation. So by subtracting everything, we can figure this out pretty quick. The other part to look at is if you add the water first, now you're trying to figure out how much chemical should I add. So Again, more questions can be asked to kind of break this up 
into different pieces. The simplest way to look at this is that your total volume includes everything. So if we take our total volume and we subtract everything that we put in the tank except for water, all we have left is water. So we know that we put 256 ounces of fluid into the machine. This equals 2 gallons of fluid. If we subtract from that 256 ounces of fluid in the machine, our arterials, we'll now know how much fluid was in the tank that was not an arterial. We had two arterials that we used. One was 16 ounces and the other was 32 ounces. Next, we're going to remove our supplemental chemicals. So anything that did not contain formalin. This will tell us how much fluid was in the tank that was not an arterial and not a supplemental. We had two supplemental chemicals that we used. One was four ounces and the other was eight ounces. If we take our 256 ounces of fluid in the machine and we remove the 48 ounces of arterial chemicals that we used and remove the 12 ounces of supplemental chemicals that we used, the only thing left is water. If we subtract 48 ounces of arterial fluid from the 256, we get 208. And when we subtract the 12 ounces of supplemental, we are left with 196 ounces of water, which is slightly less than a gallon and a half of water. Here's your opportunity to work out all of the math on your own. And then when we return, we'll show you how we worked it out. These are the chemicals you used. No water was added to the tank. What you want to find is the percentage of formalin in the entire tank, which in the equation is symbolized by the letter P. At this point, you should pause the video to work out all of the math on your own. In review, what we did was we multiplied the index, or percentage of formalin in the bottle, by the total amount of that chemical that we used, or concentrated ounces. And that equals the total percentage of formalin in the tank, or P, and multiplied that by the total volume of fluid in the tank with everything included. We use 16 ounces of a 32 index arterial, 8 ounces of an 18 index arterial, and 8 ounces of a 30 index arterial. So we multiplied the index of the first chemical by the concentrated ounces of the first chemical multiply the index by the concentrated ounces of the second chemical and also multiply the index and concentrated ounces for the third chemical. This gave us 512 for the first, 144 for the second, and 240 for the third. Then we add the three chemicals together. Once we add those three chemicals together, we get a total of 896. Next, we add together the concentrated ounces of everything we put into this tank. So in this case, we have 16 ounces of an arterial, 8 ounces of an arterial, 8 ounces of a third arterial, and then for supplementals, we have 18, 8, 32, and 4 ounces, respectfully. Since no water was added to the tank, and we're using a waterless embalming in this case, this is everything that makes up the total volume. So 
once we add these numbers together, we get 94 ounces. And 94 represents the total volume that we had in our tank prior to embalming. Next, we need to remove the 94 from the right side of the equation so we can isolate P. So we're going to divide 94 by both sides. We don't show that um, in the equation on here. We only show it being divided by the left. So if you can do this in your head, uh, this is how it would be visualized. So we're going to divide 896 by 94. And when we divide this out, we get 9.53. That means that 9.53%, remember we use percentages as whole numbers here, we don't have to move the decimal. So 9.53% of the overall tank was formaldehyde. And this is in comparison to the 32 indexes and 18 indexes and 30 indexes that respectfully made up each bottle. I really hope that this video helped you please click the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe so you can get more practice problems as they're added.